but once they start playing, they're completely different people. <laughs> and that's nice to see. Yeah. On and off the court, people recognize ping pong is what they're here for, and they're fighting hard for their teams in the championships. But all the NCTTA competitors really are friends. Uh, they see each other in tournaments throughout the year. Many of these players grew up competing against each other uh, in the junior tournaments. We can hear there that Michelle has been asked and answered that she's a business major. We'll see if that business sense can help her on the court. At the same time, do you think Ellen's economics degree <laughs> or major will help her in this game? We'll see who can get down to business. <laughs> a little bit more moisture on the table today. Some small talk with the umpire. Fun to see, even the, the umpires are friendly with these players, with many of our umpires very involved across the American table tennis scene. Both players, I'm sure, have uh, seen our umpire before and likely had him umpire their matches. You know, when you get to such a high level, uh, it's really, everybody knows everybody. Uh, usually, you know, you have a mutual friend that's either played at the junior national level or you know, something along that lines. Definitely. It's interesting to see this year uh, with Ellen playing the number one spot for Berkeley, uh, how they've dealt with the loss. Well, I say loss, but More of she'll be absence. back. Yeah, absence of, of Lily Zhang, who was their star player last year, actually winning the women's singles title. She seems to be faring off pretty well for herself right now. Lily? Uh, <laughs> or Ellen? Probably both. Both, <laughs> definitely. Lily taking time off to train for the U.S. Uh, Olympic trials. She spent the first semester of this year uh, off of school, actually training overseas, playing in uh, a league internationally. I follow her on Instagram, and I get updates occasionally. You should also follow NCTTA on Instagram. Uh, and me on Instagram, at Kevin Corb. I mean, if we're shamelessly plugging ourselves, please YouTube search QC Eats and follow me on YouTube. And speaking of shameless plugs... <laughs> I'd like to thank our sponsors, TMS, international marketing firm for all ITTF events worldwide, Yola for the champion in you, Gur Floor, the exclusive flooring provider for all ITTF World Table Tennis Championships, Double Fish, the official ball of college table tennis. And of course, thank you to the Round Rock Conventions and Visitors Bureau who helped us organize and obtain this beautiful venue for our championships this weekend. So how do you think the players will start out this match? It's a little early in the morning. Well, um, I believe both both teams just had a previous match. Yes, both teams just had a previous match, so they should be relatively warmed up. That's a good uh, point you make. Uh, we saw yesterday uh, how buys in early rounds uh, can affect players. Peter Lee losing uh, the former 
U.S. men's national champion from 2011, losing, I believe, in the round of 32 mm -hmm. uh, to his opponent, Jason Plog mm -hmm. from Texas Wesleyan. But that just goes as a statement to say how high this level of play here is at the national level. Definitely. One slip up and someone's going to take you down. Pressure is always on to perform. All right, Michelle with the first serve. Good forehand to start things off. Oh, Ellen a little tied up there. Mm. Not sure whether to go with the forehand or the backhand. And that, how is we, as we've talked about all day, or uh, all weekend long, uh, just as uh, an example of how important footwork is. Uh, you don't want to be tied up reaching with your arm on that shot. You want to move your feet and decide whether to shuffle to that forehand or that backhand. Mm -hmm. As we can see, you know, Ellen's brother, she has a pretty wide wingspan which allows her to reach and get those long out to the wide balls. Definitely. I think going forward in this match, it'll be important for both players uh, to try to work their opponent side to side on the table, mm -hmm. uh, move them around, and try to make them uncomfortable. Noticing, looking at both girls, they both have a very similar playing style. Very quick, um, relatively close to the table. Ellen's foot goes a little bit longer than the table, though. Definitely. Both girls like taking that ball low off the bounce, trying to use their opponent's spin and speed to their advantage. Oh, beautiful punch right there from Ellen. Great recovery. Right into the body of her opponent from NYU. That's again, we talked about tying your opponent up earlier with Ellen unsure whether to use that forehand or backhand. Good top spin. Very, yeah, you're right. Very spinny. You can see how high that shot off off of Michelle's paddle. And even especially with her uh, racket angled down, that still flies off the table. And you can see there compensating a little bit, mm -hmm. closing that rattle ra <laughs> racket face a little bit more than usual, and it goes into the net. A smile on Ellen's face after missing that flip attempt. I think happy she went for it, but mm -hmm. you always want those to go down. Mm -hmm. And missed flip right back from her opponent. Both of these girls have very, very tricky serves, and uh, it seems that both are having a little bit of trouble receiving them. Definitely. I expect as the match goes on and the players get a little more familiar with each other's playing styles. We'll see longer rallies like that one. Mm -hmm. Very controlled, playing each other deep on the table, side to side. And there again, we see the tricky serve confusing the opponent. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rally. And like I said earlier, uh, as the rally gets a little bit longer, 
Um, Ellen tends to move back a little bit more, trying to increase the amount of spin on her forehand. And she closes the first game, 11A, with a beautiful down the line shot. Mm -hmm. We talked about how yesterday in the men's matches we saw the high level players, and you'll see it right here, making that forehand run around shot from the backhand corner down the line. And both also cross court that time we saw the down the line option. When you're able to run around that corner and use your forehand in the backhand side, often players will have more powerful forehands. Mm -hmm. uh, it puts extra pressure on your opponent. But as we know, there are some potential risks and downsides to it too. Yeah. Uh, usually if you're going for a shot like that, uh, it's a very powerful shot, but in the case that the opponent's able to return it, there's a wide open table and nobody's home. Definitely, and that requires really, really quick, fast footwork to make it back. We saw Cheng Li so well, or doing that so well in the semifinal match against his Mississippi College teammate, mm -hmm. the eventual uh, men's singles champion, Yi Chi. She pops it up a little high, but Ellen can't quite convert. Very, very heavy underspin ball, though, on that high one. Mm -hmm. It's deceptive how spinny that can be. Well, a lot of it comes from those previous shots where they're both adding more and more spin to the ball. Definitely. When you see it popped up high like that, uh, it's often the spin has just become too much for one of them to handle. Mm -hmm. Just catches the back of the table. And we've just seen on table two, Janice Ho of NYU leveled the game score at 1-1 with an 11-6 win over Erica Tran from Berkeley. We'll keep you updated on that match as it progresses. Mm -hmm. You could have both windows open as well. You can hear commentary for both from me and Kevin. Definitely commentary on the Table 1 stream. But we've got a great, here, great view up here from the commentary booth of both tables. And this time it's Michelle's ball that goes a little bit long. Again, we see the girls having a little trouble with the higher backhand. All right. Ball's a little bit higher uh, from the push. Mm -hmm. uh, that one uh, to the backhand side. Mm -hmm. We can hear Ellen reminding herself to take her time. Uh, and it is really important between points to collect yourself and ready yourself for the next play. Mm -hmm. And there you can see it paying off with an ace serve. Beautiful, very, very short just going off the edge of the table. Michelle thinking she could wait and attack it, but misjudging the distance slightly. Good read off the serve. So. Misreads the serve this time, and ball goes a little bit long in the table. a strong backhand shot from Ellen right there. Mm -hmm. Through this first and second match, it is looking like Ellen has the stronger backhand of the two. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely paid off for her. Oh, did you see that serve? That was, for those of you at home who might not have caught that, she actually turned her paddle with the red forehand side from what would have been a backhand serve. That's not an easy thing to do not at all. as Ellen takes that second 11-4. She appears to be very much in control of this game. The last time I've actually seen a serve like that was uh, 
Malone doing it in, I believe, one of the Kuwait's Open back in 2014. Wow. That's that's a very impressive shot. Her yeah. good company to be in. Her and Ma Long. <laughs> <laughs> wow! You can, can see, see the tail end of that serve right there as she catches her opponent off guard. Mm -hmm. Let's see that again. Report. So Andy, if you're uh, Michelle's teammates, as we're seeing them receive some coaching. Uh, what would you be telling her, and how do you think she'll adapt? Uh, you know, I think Michelle right now has to... Well, let's take a look at this serve again before we go on. In super slow motion. Wow. That's a high risk, but very high payoff. Definitely, and something like that, you don't just decide, you know what, I'm going to try it yeah. in the middle of a game. All of the serves, and even something as tricky as that, has been practiced for hours and hours, hundreds if not thousands of times. Yes. Now, going back to what I was saying for Michelle, I think that she has to up the speed of her game a little bit. Because if you notice, most of the points that she wins on are the ones that it's short rallies and like that. Maybe one, two hitters, and it's gone. Uh, she has to be very decisive as to where she places the ball because Ellen has a tendency to move back um, as the rally goes on. And if she moves back, she's able to apply more and more spin, uh, which is giving Michelle a very difficult time. Yeah, it gives her a little more space to work with and open up and use that powerful loop. Forced back from the table there by Michelle. You'll see the replay. We've got great footwork from Ellen to get to these balls. See how quickly she runs up. And that is a beautiful rally. Yeah. Low, spinny, opener out over the table. Again, forcing Ellen backwards and Michelle able to put a little too much on it for Ellen to handle. Now we've seen Michelle come out here to a strong beginning. As she goes up 6-1 on that missed shot from the backhand by Ellen. You notice Michelle stays a little bit closer to the table than Ellen, and she's doing what she needs to be doing right now in order to get more and more points, and that is finishing off the point as soon as possible and out just moving a little bit faster than Ellen. Yeah, what I do like to see, though, is Ellen still continues attacking isn't giving up, yes. uh, and that's important. Your opponent goes on a, a bit of a run, they make a couple strong, aggressive shots. You, you can't stop playing aggressive yourself because the player who is able to make that first attack and gain the advantage often uh, is the one who benefits from it. Mm -hmm. A little help from the net there. Uh, down 7-3, you definitely take that. Yep. that very, very heavy topspin from Ellen. And that's her sticking to her game. Still playing aggressive attacks, and now they started to fall from her, as I'm sure her opponent from NYU is starting to get a little nervous as her lead's getting smaller. But a good composed short serve there. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And that's just inches away from clipping the edge of the table, too. Right. I'm actually very surprised that Ellen got her racket on that. Again, great footwork. Able to make that lunge and reach the ball. And after fending off that first game point, Ellen will have four more to defend if she wants to make a run at this game. Mm -hmm. Try to finish out the match in three. 
Ooh, a lucky break as the deceptive flip from Michelle goes to her backhand, but she's able to retrieve. And we see two more game points defended by Ellen, bringing the score to 8-10. And can she do what more? We'll see, Andy. Uh, she's certainly getting amped up to. If I'm Michelle, I'm feeling very nervous right now. Oh. And you can see acknowledging her mistake there and uh, missing that high forehand. And did you see how the serve return there from Michelle popped up a little high? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is the, the same nerves in that situation that uh, let her opponent come back from down 10-5. You know, you have to understand, like, these girls, they both train a lot, a lot. They put in a lot of hours into this game. And most of their shots, what they're doing, they're facing off against very high-level uh, high level players. And they don't usually get balls that high. And so sometimes, you know, it might be difficult to return if you haven't returned in a while. And even when you do get balls that high, it's very spinny. Right. As we'll see, a serve from the net cam here. She goes for that attack and can't quite get it. Just centimeters under the top of the net. It's very surprising to see. Uh, even after missing that shot and losing that last game, she still tries to compile herself, telling herself, it's OK. Let's just move on. Next game. And we'll begin our fourth game here with Ellen to serve. And she strikes first, taking a 1-0 lead. And in the meantime, on table two, we've just seen Berkeley take the first match in this team competition with Erica Tran defeating Janice Ho 11-6 in the fourth to win 3-1. Berkeley will take that point and go up 1-0 in the team competition. And Ellen is certainly taking no prisoners right now. She is going full head of steam in. A little frustration with the backhand there. She's reminding herself that elbow needs to be kept away from the body. Good point. Barney Reed talked yesterday how the elbow needs to be kept away. It acts as that fulcrum in your swing. Uh, if it's too close, with a great rally there, mm -hmm. if it's too close to your body, you aren't able to uh, get the power you need. Mm -hmm. You need a pivot point. I agree. Three, three in game four between Michelle and Ellen. Good composure from the backhand there. Mm -hmm. If I'm Ellen, I want to finish this out in this fourth game. I don't want a fifth game. Yeah. We're a little tired in our third day of competition. Uh, and nerves, you can see, are starting to get to her, it looks like. Mm -hmm. In the fifth game, the, tie, the score all tied up. It could be anyone's match. You do not see much emotion from Michelle. Quite stone-faced. Important to note that both players do still have their timeouts left. And if either pull, and if either pulls too far ahead of the other, I expect to see one used in this match, don't you think, Andy? Mm -hmm. In this game. Yeah. Great speed. Wow. And you can see that even though Ellen was pulled far to the forehand corner, she came back and hit back with her backhand. Very good. Now she takes that two-point lead. That's got to make her feel a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was Michelle, I might, I might call a timeout right now. And if, Michelle, if Ellen gets this next point, then I would definitely call a timeout. My thoughts exactly.
Ooh. Oh, what a tough break, catching the net. And there it is. You'll see the point again. Good backhand attack there from Michelle. Moved all around the table and then the net trickling over. And Michelle has called a timeout. And so I think that's, you know, using a timeout is very, very useful, especially when your opponent is gaining a lot of momentum. Uh, I think that, you know, if you give yourself a chance to calm down and you give a chance for them to lose their steam so that they don't steamroll through you, uh, I think it can be imperative and almost crucial to actually meet perhaps winning. Definitely. What you can see happen often is, well, especially in this situation, Ellen, some frustration on her face earlier in the match. But in the last few points, she's gone on a bit of a streak. You want to use that timeout, slow her down, mm -hmm. uh, and not let her run away with his match while well, you still have a fighting chance. from the table there. Good serve from Michelle. On a strong, low forehand loop. Very, very spinny. Too quick for Ellen to catch up to. And with that missed attack attempt, we have three match points to Ellen Huang. You can see that Ellen took a backhand a little bit center of the body, and almost reaching for that one. And another powerful attack. Michelle is not going down without a fight. No. Can she stave off another match point here? We'll see. Oh, and she does it. Yeah. Bringing the score to Deuce. Yeah. At this point, if I'm Ellen, I may be thinking, I wish I had used a timeout a few points ago. Mm -hmm. Tried to stop the momentum like we talked about. You can see the nerves getting to Ellen right now. Oh, oh. and she's done it. Yeah. Michelle brings this match up to game five, and you can see no emotion from Michelle's face. Ellen pretty much puts all her emotions on her sleeve right now. She definitely wanted that one. Tough to have something like that get away from you mm -hmm. when it looked so much like you had it under wraps. But now we'll go to the fifth game and we'll see both players fight. Uh, this really will be a critical match for the Berkeley team, uh, both teams, as they hope to extend their lead or catch up in this team competition. And even here, you know, in the, even here where you can see where they're talking to both coaches, it's a very, very different mindset. Um, Michelle's coach just seems to be stating, you know, do, you know, continue doing what you're doing. You're doing great right now. Whereas uh, Ellen's coach is really telling her to be, uh, be a little bit more specific. I think he's, re I think she's reminding her to stick with her game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, reminding her that uh, other than a handful of runs Michelle has gone on, Ellen has been the dominant player as we see the player from NYU get called for a service let, given a warning. And Ellen a little bit uncomfortable there. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And a missed opportunity there as Michelle misses the forehand smash. 
You can see here, heavy push. I may have been caught off a finger. Very good composure attacking from Ellen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Her arm's still reeling from that hit. There's so much power on mm -hmm. it. Not quite sure. I think what spin is on that flip, as, or on that serve as she attempts the flip. Her racket not quite finishing forward smoothly like she would have wanted. And at this point, if you're Ellen, would you use a timeout would, down 2 4? Yes, I would definitely use a timeout. Even though it's still early in the game itself, uh, she is. Oh, and there it is. Her coach calling for a timeout, I believe. See, in, in my opinion, I really wish they'd used that timeout at 2-4. The, the reason for that being that you do get that chance uh, after Michelle has won three points in a row, I believe, with 2-1, mm -hmm. uh, to go back to your corner, calm yourself down, collect your nerves, and then even if you do go out and lose that next point, uh, it brings the score to 5-2, uh, where you do get that side change, and it gives you that chance to, again, briefly calm down, collect yourself, mm -hmm. and get composed as you look to continue this match. Oh, that's a very good note. Yeah, now, otherwise, uh, once the players return to the table, there'll be no leaving it until the match is decided. Mm -hmm. 5-2 in game five, and both timeouts are used up. Will we see my favorite, Deuce in the fifth? <laughs> we'll find out. Mm -hmm. oh. Just clips the top of the net. The ball goes long. <laughs> well, Michelle really really is the, dom the dominant force right now in this game. Mm -hmm. She's hammering it down both sides to Ellen's forehand and backhand. Yeah, moving her around the table at will. Ellen's just trying to keep up. It's a good backhand flip opener from Ellen. Mm -hmm. Spinny. Is this the momentum that Ellen needs in order to get back into the game, you think? Uh, it could be if she does continue with a couple more points. And remember, Michelle has used her timeout. So if Ellen does go on a run, she'll have to deal with uh, the momentum that Ellen is starting to pick up as it's only a two-point game. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is still anyone's match. 5-7 right now. You see Michelle is putting a lot of pressure deep into Ellen's backhand. And uh, that's two, maybe three times now that we've seen it clip the, uh, the net. Mm. Ellen reeling and she misses that one. Down 5-9, this is going to be tough if she wants to come back. And that clipped the edge of the table. That's always tough to see, down 5-9. You want so much for the players to fight it out, and we get a lucky break from Michelle. Mm -hmm. But good for Ellen to continue fighting in the next point, and takes that, making it 10-6 with Michelle in the lead. Mm -hmm. And this will be an important match with Berkeley down on the second table. You see there, she brushed the ball just a little bit too thin and uh, caused not enough to go over the net. 